Hello and welcome. My name is Nilaus and welcome to this third installment of this uh, tutorial series of called Base in a Book. We are now looking at the electrified mining and smelting and also the design of your smelting area so that you don't have to rebuild it and it can be easily scaled to the mid and almost to the late game, but at least say to the mid game. Now, before we start looking at the blueprints, because this is of course very blueprint heavy, let's start by looking at a basic mining drill. So. You can see the area around it, that's the area the miner will grab from. So it's not only below its actual footprint, but it's also a bit around it. That means that so something such as this, you can see here, that actually has full coverage of all of the mineral patches. However, this does not give an out of throughput. And considering this minefield has exactly the same amount of resources, I might as well mine it out as fast as possible. I'm going to get the same, but if I mine it out faster, well, I have this cleared and I can move on to the next instead of trying to drag it out and therefore I have lower throughput in my base. So always build them next to each other. Build dense patterns. That's the one part. The other part of this is if we look based on that premise, you would want to build exactly out towards the edges. However, even though this is also covering it, I am an advocate of building it like this. And the reason for that is we look at the content of these here, look to the right, this is amount 500 and something. Well, in the middle of the, the remaining patch, it's about 2000. So if I place a miner here, it has 50,000 in the area. While I place a miner here, it has 13. If I just slide it one in, it has 18. And that makes a big difference because this one will of course stay there longer while these ones will empty out faster. So the end will be out faster. And therefore, if I put them out here, they will not really get, I mean, they'll run out too fast. So my, I'm always advocating, advocating for this and here. Basically, that's my ideal position for, for this one. So with that said, let's look at a blueprint for this part. This is a blueprint. This contains 14 miners. I'll place it like this. The reason why it's 14 miners is because 14 miners is what it takes to saturate the yellow belt. And that's the one reason. The other reason, which is also part of the design, is that if you look at it end to end, it tiles perfectly. The power poles are exactly connected as they snap, snap to the ends. And of course, top down, they're also fitting. And that's the reason for the red one is the power pole somewhere there. So that's a nice little blueprint to get going. Let's, as always, let's populate this map. That one is not really necessary. And with me, there are lights in my blueprints. And what a coincidence. Now, this is also one that is important. These small ones will not reach across here. The next tier will, but the small ones will not. So place one either here or here. That will cover through. We will get it. So now this is working. What is important to note is that as this is saturating a full yellow belt, it can sometimes be necessary. Go here. And now I'm going to show a trick. So on a normal belt, if this is running at full speed, these miners will not be able to fully compress the belt. I mean, that is what you see here. They are right next to each other because sometimes they will put it in and there's a, like a half a gap between. Because that half a gap is there, it will not be able to put something in between. And that means the belt looking at it from top when it's fully, uh, trying to be fully loaded. Some of these, like the last ones will be empty or they'll be, uh, they'll be stuck because they can't insert in, in the half space that's left. So the solution to that is actually putting an underground and up again, because the underground here serves basically as a basically as a chest that says, all right, in this area, we can have six, 12, made 24. So whatever comes in, it just says it's less than 24. There's room for one more. And then it outputs nicely compressed. So that's a solution to that. I'm going to, uh, we're going to drag this on a bit. I hope I haven't created enough. Anyway, let's go to somewhere else. Now, this is a nice space I have here. Lo and behold, this is plenty of room for us to build smelting columns. And that's really important. You need to find somewhere where it's plenty of room and then you build smelting columns. Let's build them, you know, let's some space. 
and the way I do it. And I would recommend doing something along the same lines, right? Because it actually makes sense. If you just built, let's have a look at this one. I'll populate it immediately. And I can build sort of the scale up. This is the default one. There are many ways to build smelting columns. I am a big fan of this one. I don't know who first invented it. It might be something that sort of came out of multiple people doing somewhat the same things at the somewhat the same time. And lots of people have improved it over the over time. However, it is nice. And that's the main objective of this. There. Now I'll just build it and then afterwards I'll explain it. Hmm. Shouldn't it be one there? Yes, yeah, should be one there. Not really necessary. This is also an important part. It's easy to create by doing this. That's also a matter. I mean, this might be sort of for speed running, but you're going to build a lot of these. So having something that is convenient to build is also important because you're going to build a lot. There, it is of course not powered and I'll just find a way to power it. I think we have some power up here, so it must have. Good, now this is powered. So let me explain what happens. I have two entries, one on this side of the belt that is split, that goes on the outside of the belt. One on the inside of the belt goes on the inside of the belt. That means I only need one belt to run both the copper or uh, the iron ore and the coal at the same time. It's hugely convenient and the best thing is it also inserts on a single belt in the middle. So this one is quite space intensive and only at a cost of some of these. So I highly recommend using this one. Now let's uh, let's just show how it works. You want to take the coal in here but I'll just take it like this because I know it's going to continue running to other places as well. And this one, this will then be our iron that we created a bit further down. So let's just go down and take it. Then we can see how that works. Oh, I hope I brought enough. That looks like, looks fine. All right. So iron is coming along. Now it's working at full steam here. It's also working and you can see all of these have now been filled up with coal. I cannot build it any longer than this because the yellow belt will simply not work. Pass it on further. By this one, the last one will exactly take the last and that's 100% utilization. And we like that. So this is a perfect size. This, ah, we kind of forgot something here. Let's actually build a radar while we're at it. <clears throat> So we can see what we're doing. Let's get it up here. Boom. Anyway, we have the iron coming in. And what happens then is from here, it bounces up or dives below and goes on to the next one. And this line can feed a lot. So here we have, we now start filling it up. We can see how far it gets down the line. It will not be able to get all the way in the beginning because these ones are overfilling by a small bit but now you can see things are progressing this one will then take on to the next challenge area and they're being inserted also at this point it should be mentioned that since this will once it's fully up and running fill up a complete yellow belt however it will not be able to do so at this point so because of the same error there are gaps in the way that it's set so I'm, I'm building this so that it, it becomes easier for it to fill up the entire belt. Of course, now that it's backlogged, it will continue or it'll, it'll get stuck. Anyway, so that's the basic smelting column. The re what is important is when you start doing stuff, make sure that you squeeze, consider that it needs to be fit for two. So in this case, you want to clear it out until this area. Right, because then when we switch to red belts, this one needs double. It need to actually need to be doubled. And that's, yeah, that's pretty, uh, 
that's necessary. Or in order for, for us to do steel, we can also do we can also do steel by um, by taking iron and converting. Anyway, now let's look at the layout of this because that's at least as important. In order, what I propose is that you at least from the beginning say this. This is iron. I need iron. I need a lot of iron. And you will then mark, say, all right, this is how I do it. I always say, I'm going to need a walking path, this area, to get around it. So it leaves some space around it. And But that's that's a personal preference. That's how I do it. And also, again, as a walking path here, I might... This is basically just for me to say, there is some space here. And then again, I'll put the blueprint and saying, you know what? I'm going to need exactly the same amount of copper as I have iron. So that's the copper. You know what? I'd like some space as well. So now I have iron and copper. And you can see it's already taking up a lot of space. And the next down thing I would then build is that I want, and I always want, a line for the stone. So whatever I have the stone, I want to drag that stone onwards without editing it. Also, let's go back to this one. I want, this will be my stone furnaces or stone builds. So here we'll mark this with a stone. We'll mark, oh, of course I can't do that. This one with a copper icon and up here with a stone. Yes, and there's a bit more, and that gets a bit more fancy. Can have here. This one will produce the iron. That's we will be able to do a bit of this. But one thing that's really important. This one will output iron. Processed iron. And in order for us to do steel, we can basically, and this is where it gets really easy. In the way that I have done it here, I have coal on the outside. Then, now we, we are getting a bit more fancy. And I'll explain this just briefly what's going on. This one will be a splitter. So there will be iron on this belt. And where did the splitter go? Oh yeah, it hasn't been created yet. Splitter. And here. Okay, so what happens is that the coal is on the outside, that gets filled in here. This one will block the inside, but allow the outside. The outside goes in here, which is coal, goes in, keeps on the outside lane. And from here, the finished iron plates go up and move this direction. That means at this point, we can now insert basically, basically this part and just remove some of these junk things. I'll also provide this blueprint in detail, which will then produce the steel. We will just, and just to prove this part, we will go up and convert the iron to the steel. So let's move all the way up and hold on. I propose also to do two of these steel. You can see that's a lot of space already at this point reserved for something that isn't even there yet. There yet. There, and let's take our new temporary blueprint just to illustrate what it can do this way. And here. It is important that these are connected first. And this, now let's have a look at 
at how it works. You can see here the way that it spreads and goes in here. Let's get a few more of these just so that we, it will work. Just so I can show that it's working. Come on. I just want to have this working. And there you can see here why I need to leave this space because when I double the size, it will be it'll be bigger. Surprise. Oops. Power also important. That was not the right place for the power. It actually makes it a lot easier to build when when it's like this. Lights. Lights are working, and at this point, I'll just build as many as I can of these. Let's see how it works. So first, they are just filtering in iron. And then they're filtering in... Ah, the steel, because I don't have the steel researched at this point. Which is kind of obvious because this is very early game, but I wanted to build it at the same time. So obviously we can't really show that the steel how the steel works, but I can show you this is the setup, and I'll also provide the blueprint for it. So there you have it. We have four lanes of iron, four lanes of copper, one lane of of stone by itself, and then stone smelting, and then two lanes of of. Uh, or what's it called? Steel smelting. Then we are basically good to go to feed the base for a very long time. So this one's a bit too long, this uh, tutorial, but it is also a very important part. So I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more like this. And check back to see if there are more tutorials available. Anyway, thank you very much for joining, and I'll be seeing you in another time. Bye.